even in the previous video, we were arguing that right now at 6,600 visits, the red curve exemplifies all points where we meet 6,600 visits. And points over here that are to the right of our constraint function, for example, hiring 20 doctors and almost two nurses. Of course, we can't have fractional nurses, but hypothetically speaking, this would cost us way more than we are allowed to spend. So for instance, if we said that we're paying $40,000 for each doctor multiplied by 20 doctors, we're already at a budget of $800,000. And that's way beyond our budget. So anywhere outside of 20 doctors, of course, we can't hire negative nurses to still be negative 20 nurses. We can't, we can't have that. But if you did, minus 10,000 times 20 nurses, then you would get a budget of $600,000, which would be this point down here, uh, 20, negative 20. But that is not a feasible solution. So anywhere to the right of this black line, we're over budget. So anywhere along this curve with the, uh, to the left of that line, we're under budget. So we can continue pushing that out until we find a point where the number of doctors and nurses, you can see our visits are going up, where we can maximize our number of doctors and nurses. And you can see that now, if I were to zoom in on this, I am on points that are to the right of my constraint function, which means that any point along this red curve would require a budget that is higher than the budget that we are allocated. So I have to stay at most on the line. And of course, if I'm on, if my red curve is on the line right about there, I can get about 9,800 visits by being, by hiring 10 doctors and 20 nurses. In fact, we could check that if I hired 10 doctors and 20 nurses, uh, that should be plus, sorry, that should be plus right there, then I will spend exactly $600,000 and that is the largest number of visits that I can have. So the one thing that we need to point out now is if this is in fact the, mac the optimal point, then what is significant about these two functions are g of xy equals 600,000 and our f of xy. Well, what's significant about this point is that we observed that the gradient vector at a point always points perpendicular to the curve, to the contour itself. And these are nothing more than contours right here. 40,000 x plus 10,000 y equals z. This is a contour specifically at a z value of 600,000. Also, this red curve is a contour of where the number of visits, the output of our objective function is exactly 9,800. So we observed already that the gradient vector always points perpendicular to the curve. And the one thing that we can observe at this one particular point where those two functions intersect is that they are going to have gradient vectors that point perpendicular to them. So this red curve, for instance, will have a vector that points perpendicular to it. And we notice that, uh, well, we, we didn't change the value, I, or I should say we did change the value of V. And every time we increase the value of V, the contour moved further out in that direction. Also, this guy here is going to have a vector that points perpendicular to it that is not necessarily the same length, but that will point in either the same or opposite direction as the gradient vector for the red curve. So we can think about the black one as being the gradient of f of x, y at our critical point x naught, y naught. And we can think about the red or the, yeah, the red curve as being the gradient vector or this line as being the gradient vector of g at the position x naught, y naught. Now there's more proof behind this than we're going to let on, but for all intents and purposes, this is, this is substantial for us to make a claim that is in fact mathematically true. And to formalize this, we're going to say that we observe that f of xy and g of xy at the point x naught, y naught of optimized f, that's remember the highest number of visits we could have, have gradients that are parallel to one another. They're not necessarily the same length, 
but they are going to point in either exactly the same or perhaps one of them will point in the opposite direction, but they will still be parallel to one another as they are uh, vectors along the same line. Both curves are tangent to one another, uh, are, I should say, parallel to one another. So if this is going to be generally true of any objective function and the corresponding constraint function, then what I should be able to say is there's a mathematical statement that describes this. That is mathematically the optimized point, either minimized or maximized, depending on the context, x comma y equals x naught y naught occurs whenever the following mathematical relationship is true. The gradient of f is equal to some multiple of g. So remember that vectors that are parallel are multiples of one another. For instance, the vector 1, 1 and the vector 2, 2, they point in exactly the same direction. 1, 1 just happens to be a little bit shorter. 2, 2 happens to be a little bit longer, and but they still point in the same direction. Even negative 2, negative 2, it would just point in exactly the opposite direction. So uh, we, need, we need to make sure that they're parallel to one another, and we also need to ensure that this, the constraint is met. That is that g of x, y equals c, where c is some constant representing our constrained value. In our context, that number was 600,000. Okay, so I think we're ready to observe that we said this was about 9,800 visits that occurred at this point. So this is just a two-dimensional flattening of the point 10, 20, 9,800. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that we're just eyeballing this right now. So whether this turns out to be 9,800 exactly is, is hard to say. We may be able to continue zooming in on that, and there may be some separation between those two curves, but we at least now know how to find it. And without doing so mathematically, it would be very difficult to do. So example two, mathematically find maximum, the maximum number of health clinic visits using this due concept. Then choose four valid points surrounding this critical point and support that this is the maximum possible value. Okay, so g of x, f of x, y, sorry, is the function that was given to us. And I'm going to use x and y here just to make this consistent with our definition. So doctors will be represented by x, nurses will be represented by y. So x is going to be my d, y is going to be my n. Again, just to make that as simple as possible, g of x, y is equal to 40,000 x plus 10,000 y. And this value uh, right here, I failed to mention, this is called lambda. This is just a constant. And it's called lambda. It's a Greek symbol. It's typically the one used. It could be a, a W or B, the, the symbol you use there does not entirely matter too much, but it's a constant multiplier, just like here between 1, 1 and 2, 2, the constant multiplier is 2. So you could say that the lambda here is equal to 2. So to set this up, we have these functions. We need to compute the gradient vectors. So that means I need F sub X, which is the derivative of this with respect to X, and that's going to come out to be 600 x to the negative 0.4, y to the 0.3. f sub y will be the partial with respect to y. Again, you can do this in Desmos. It will be 300, or, uh, Wolfram Alpha. x to the 0.6, y to the negative 0.7. g of x, y, its partial with respect to x, will be 40,000. And g sub y will be... 10,000. That's a linear function, so its rates of change are constant, and that's why we get those values. And our gradient vectors will be f sub x, which is 600, x to the negative 0.4, y to the 0.3, and then this component down here will be the change with respect to y, and that equals some multiple of the, the gradient vector at 40,000 and 10,000. And then also, we said that the other thing that has to hold true is the constraint, right? So 40,000x 
plus 10,000 Y has to equal 600,000. So we really have three equations here. We have the first equation, which is this guy, and that says that 600 X to the negative 0.4 times Y to the 0.3 equals lambda times 40,000 and 300 X to the 0.6 times Y to the negative 0.7 equals lambda times 10,000 and equation 3 is our constraint to make sure that we remain on the constraint curve. So we need to solve three equations for x and y. And that point that we get is what we're going to refer to as the critical point x naught, y naught. So this is going to be a challenging system of equations to solve. So we're going to move over to Wolfram Alpha and we're going to have Wolfram Alpha compute the x and y that satisfy all three of these equations. And so here we have it all entered in 600x to the negative 0.4 times y to the 0.3 equals lambda times 40,000. I'm using just a capital L here. You can use any letter that you want, but L, capital L, reminds me that it's lambda. And then comma, the next equation, 300x to the 0.6 times y to the negative 0.7 equals the same lambda times 10,000, comma, our constraint, 40,000x plus 10,000y equals 600,000. So we just want to make sure that, it input, that the input looks correct. There's a set of functions in there. Now you can see that the x to the negative 0.4, that the interpretation is to make it 1 over x to the positive 0.4. And same thing here with y to the negative 0.7 is y, 1 over y to the positive 0.7. And as I scroll down, I'm looking for solution. I'm going to click on approximate form because some values may get uh, recorded exactly, and I see that x equals 10, y equals 20 is my critical point. Now the value of lambda, we'll mention a little bit later what this means, it actually has a valuable meaning, but for now all we care about is just the value of x and the value of y. So now that we know that x equals 10, y equals 20, that is the number of doctors that we want to hire is 10 and the number of nurses we want to hire is 20. We want to now verify that this is in fact a maximum and not a minimum because that would be terrible if we were hired to maximize visits but we accidentally minimized it. I also want to point out that x equals 10, y equals 20 is the same value we found here. We got a z value or a number of visits equal to 9800. To actually see what those number of visits are for that point we should take f of 10 comma 20 which is uh, 1000 times 10 to the 0 0.6 20 to the 0 0.3 which comes out to about 9780 and that's the number of visits we can achieve now how do we know this is a maximum uh, well we want to look at points surrounding that so to check one of the critical features here is that we want to make sure that we only look at x, y coordinates where the constraint is met. So that is where 40,000 x plus 10,000 y equals 600,000. So if I pick x values, uh, x here and y here, I just want to make sure that the x and y values I, I pick are legitimate. So I know that my best x is 10. I'll pick a value of about 9.99 and um, then something farther away from that 9.9 .9, and then I'll pick 10.01 and 10.0 or 10.1 rather and I just want to make sure that the number of visits that I get for those number of doctors right around 10 is actually results in a lower number of visits than uh, than the number of visits that I found to be the maximum, which is 9,780. Uh, so, so in my constraint, if I solve this for y, I get this equation, and for each of these x's, I can find these y's and see that only the diagonal elements apply to this problem, and the output value right there at 1020.